Hello, it's Helder, and today I want to go over essentials that I deem necessary when rucking with my dog. I enjoy rucking, I enjoy hiking, I uh, like being out there, and having my dog with me, of course, makes it that much more enjoyable. He gets a workout, remains healthy, I have companionship, sometimes where I really don't feel like getting out there, especially in inclement weather, but I know he needs to get out there to get his exercise, kind of uh, nudges me towards uh, having to go on that ruck. So pretty good motivation, uh, holds me accountable, so it works for me. But regardless, getting out there with my dog requires some pre-planning and making sure that I have certain things that are gonna make everything more enjoyable and safer so that when we're out there on our little uh, adventure, we both enjoy it and uh, get back home safely. So let's get into some of the items that I deem necessary or essential when I'm out there rucking with my dog. All right, the first item, a dog bowl or a container, obviously to be able to get them water when they need it and also to be able to give them their snacks or their food. Any container will pretty much do. I enjoy these or utilizing these collapsible ones that I've been using over the years. Just simple, I'm able to hook it up onto the Molly setup on any of my rucks. Always there, always with me, always serves a purpose and it's also pretty light. A hands-free leash. Now for me this is always important because of course when I'm out there on the ruck I'm also trying to do other things. Other times I'm recording, recording gear, whether whatever it is. I'd rather have my hands free than have one of them occupied because I need to hold on to the leash. So one thing I've been doing uh, for a while now is getting a carabiner. Once again make sure you have a good pack that's made and constructed well. And what I do is I hook up one of these very good carabiners, D-rings, to basically the setup on the actual uh, pack. From there, I'll get a leash, and the leashes and collars that I'm actually using are from Click Belts. I've been using these uh, collars and leashes with my dogs for probably about the last three years, and uh, can't speak uh, more highly about them. I mean, there's something that I can trust. They look good, they're made well, they have these Cobra buckles that uh, make me feel secure when I'm out there with my dog, especially when I'm not holding on to him and he's just affixed to me uh, via the pack. It's good to know that I, the setup that I have is good to go. He's not going to break away. He's not going to get loose. Uh, he's not going to hurt himself. And same goes for the leash that's here. And uh, Click Belts was actually nice enough to uh, customize them for me and embroider some of his name on there. So once again, pretty cool to go. Just some little extras. But what I really want you to keep in mind as far as make sure your setup's good to go. Make sure it's not going to injure your dog or injure you. Make sure it's credible and you can count on it so your dog does not get loose. Enjoy using a collar and I also utilize a harness on these rucks. When I really need to control the dog for whatever scenario, uh, we're in a lot of people, a lot of noise, maybe on a highway with a lot of cars going back and forth, I prefer having them on the collar, have a little bit more control. But when we're out there in leisure and I know it's safe and I could kind of let the leash go out a little bit even, even though he's still affixed to me, I uh, prefer utilizing a harness. It's more comfortable for him, he feels better, he's not getting choked or pulled on, whether it's me that's jerking to one side or whether it's him that's jerking to another, especially on these longer, longer rucks. We're uh, becoming tired, dehydrated, little things like that begin setting in for both you and your dog. And uh, all of these uh, items, let's say, that I'm featuring, that's what I utilize for my dog. If you're interested in finding out more, there's an accompanying blog post on coachhelder.com. There's links in, this, in the description and in the comment field. So check it out if you want to get more information on uh, the particulars of the products that I'm featuring in this video. Extra water. Extra water may not be something that you think about. Uh, a lot of times I go out there rucking with other peers, friends, members, and uh, they'll bring their dog and they'll bring their water supply. But they're pretty much just bringing one water supply for them and saying, well, I'll share a little bit with my dog. Well, when we're out there on these longer rucks, and sometimes, once again, you get caught in unexpected elements, might be a little bit hotter than you thought it would be. You might have drank more water. You might have given some water to another colleague that didn't bring enough, and now you don't have enough for your dog. So uh, once again, that's very bad planning, and it's something that you need to uh, account for. So don't just bring water for you. Make sure you bring more than enough uh, for your dog. Extra poop bags, something you might not think about. I usually have one or two in my ruck, but when I'm going out there on these longer rucks, I try to bring more, I definitely bring more, uh, because unexpectedly, of course, when the dog has to go, he has to go, and you might be in the middle of nowhere, 
And now, uh, what are you going to do? You're not going to be able to have access to a bag. The last thing you want to do is leave the poop exposed out there. Uh, not only is it not sanitary and not a nice thing to do, but it's also illegal. So make sure you have those extra poop bags. They will come in handy, especially when you least expect it. A little shovel or a trowel uh, along the same lines as what we just spoke about with the poop bags. Uh, there's other times where you might not want to carry a, uh, there might not be a recycle bin or a, uh, a garbage bin or a trash bin for miles. And now you're going to be walking around with this little stinky bag of poop. Uh, one of the things that I like to do, especially when we're out there in places where you can do this, you know, more so out there in nature, I'd rather utilize a little shovel, get it off the uh, path, bury it a little bit, and, uh, you know, you're good to go. You're back onto your ruck. And uh, just something fairly simple, uh, inexpensive, also lightweight, and really comes in handy uh, for those times where a poop bag might just not do it. Food and snacks. We like snacks. We like our hydration breaks. Well, so does your dog. They're out there burning more calories. Uh, they're straining. They're excited. So all of this stuff's going on. They're going to require more fuel and more food. So make sure that you have those ample snacks for them. Something that's, uh, that you can keep in your pack that's not going to go bad. Uh, some kind of good kibble, healthy kibble. And be able to give them snacks periodically when you stop. And you let's say you have a little lunch break or you're guzzling something down. Or you stop for a, a head call, bathroom break. You can go ahead and... Uh, Give them some of this in your bowl that you already brought for you. And uh, that way your, uh, your dog's energy level is always being maintained. And uh, you don't have a hungry, cranky dog. Illumination. Uh, let's think about reflective vests, collars, harnesses. Uh, tape that you can put on existing collars, harnesses. And uh, a big reason why is a lot of times we'll get out there and it's very early. And we are near cars and streets and things like that. So just as a safety precaution. Sometimes our treks or our uh, rucks bring us through tunnels and dark places. Now you're in there for a while. Once again, great thing to have illumination, even a, a collar that lights up with a little light, anything like that that's going to notify uh, people in these darker situations. Remember, the climate could change at any time. Uh, you might be out there longer than expected, and now it starts, uh, uh, dusk starts settling in. So these are the things you want to pre-plan for, and having some kind of reflection and illumination for your dog I feel is imperative. A tarp or a rain fly. Uh, there's been quite a few times we're out there on the ruck and the weather uh, as far as what was predicted was uh, no rain or very light chance of rain or scattered showers or whatever and then never fails we're out there a couple miles in and psh, sky opens up and sometimes you have to wait that out for 30 minutes 45 minutes because it's just a little bit too much and especially when you're out there with, with your dog and they might even have less uh, weather protection uh, with them and uh, getting caught in that round downpour is not going to feel good for your dog and it's not going to feel good for you. So having a light, inexpensive tarp that you can set up in seconds with rope and just having some kind of little shelter so that you could ride out these downpours if they were to happen, definitely something that I suggest having as part of your gear. Sunblock. Yes, your dogs do get sunburn, at least I know that mine do. And it doesn't matter what color they are, especially with the thinner coats uh, on those longer rucks, even when it's cloudy, They'll end up getting some sunburn and it's uncomfortable for them, it's not good for them, and it could turn into something serious. So have uh, some sunblock in your pack and make sure that it's for dogs. There's certain ingredients in uh, human uh, sunblock that's uh, very bad for dogs and actually toxic for dogs. So make sure the sunblock is something that is actually made safely for your dog. A barrier of some sort or a dog bed. And... Uh, We'll be taking breaks and sometimes it's very rocky terrain and you want to get a little bit of R&R &R and you've been out there rucking for a few miles and it's hot and all this other stuff and you're getting tired. Well, so is your dog. And now you sit out there and it might be uh, relatively uncomfortable because it could be rocky terrain, as I mentioned, could be muddy, could be dirty. And the way that you want to get some quick R&R &R and you have your clothes to protect you, your dog doesn't. So having some kind of barrier, once again, folds up easily, keeping in your pack. When you need it, you pull it out there. And it also protects against things like ticks. You know, you're out there in the bush and all of a sudden you just lay out for a water break and, uh, you know, find some shade or whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden your uh, dog's laying on a pile of ticks. So not a good thing. So there's not only comfort, but there's also some protection there. So be sure to have some kind of barrier, tarp, dog bed for your dog. A first aid kit. And once again, a lot of these items, of course, you need to have your own personal one. But then you have to have items in there that are specific for your dog. Uh, they can be out there breaking a nail, uh, cutting themselves, uh, getting some kind of thorn stuck in them. So being able to have things to address that 
uh, some kind of ointment to put on there to soothe them uh, bodes well and it's something you should definitely have in your pack. So that pretty much sums up my list of the essentials. Of course, there's always more, but as far as essential and something that I have with me pretty much all the time, uh, that's, that's pretty much a, a good list there that I just gave you. Now, there are some other precautions that I want you to keep in mind. Let's say things like tick, tick medication during uh, certain uh, scenarios or certain times of the season uh, with the deer ticks and, and causing all sorts of havoc. And uh, we want to think about addressing that. So once again, something that I don't consider essential to keep in your pack, but keep that as a precaution, tick medication for your dogs. Another precaution, specific medications, supplements that your dog might need. Make sure that you have that with you. Thinking about the weather, rain gear, uh, sweaters when it's super cold, windbreakers, uh, booties to protect their feet if you're out there in the snow. So be smart, once again, these aren't essentials because it really depends on the time of the year and of course, the location that you're operating in. A life vest. Sometimes our rucks require traversing through water, wading through water to get through the other side. Always a good idea to have some kind of life vest for your pet, especially when you're going through a river. Once again, you're tired, you're weighed down with a heavy ruck, dog is tired, anything could happen, especially if there are any kind of a, a currents going on in little rivers that you're crossing. So having access to a life jacket, once again, something relatively lightweight. There's uh, harnesses out there that double, double as a uh, life jacket. But, you know, once again, make sure your uh, dog is comfortable and everything's broken in before you put this thing on and you go out there and then he's getting chafed and all this other stuff. But we could get that in, uh, into that in some future review. Uh, and then uh, pretty much the last thing that I wanted to go over was to make sure that your dog is trained. You're going out there rucking, and especially if you're going out there with a group. And, uh, you know, rucking's all about us getting together, enjoying and swapping stories and working on a common goal and testing ourselves and fitness level and all of this good stuff. Well, now, if you bring an untrained dog and he's going to go there and totally ruin that for everybody, then that's pretty much on you. So make sure that your dog is friendly with other, do other dogs, friendly with other people, listens to you. Of course, they're going to get excited, but you know your dog. You know your dog better than anybody else. But before you venture or even think about bringing them out into a ruck, make sure that they're uh, able to assimilate with everybody else out there. Don't bring a dog that's going to be a buzzkill. So that's my list. Hope that you found it helpful. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment.